Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the questions that people had about the Lafay hub motors, um, because these are questions that I had myself. And also, uh, we made a previous video in on this channel about axial flux motors, and there was some confusion about whether Elafe's motors are radial flux or axial flux, because on their website, the diagrams look like they're radial flux, but, um, uh, Chris Anthony said in the video with um, uh, Jay Leno that th that the motors were axial flux. So there was some confusion there. I reached out to Alafe at that time and asked them if their motors were axial or radial flux. And they said radial flux. And what was unclear at that time was maybe they had both and most of their motors were radial flux. But maybe they were making a special motor for Aptera that was axial flux. And that was unclear. And then the other thing that we wanted to know that people wanted to know is how are we handling brake dust? Because if you look at these uh, this animation from their website, the uh, disc is in the brakes are embedded in here, and it looks like it's in a sealed system. So if you watch this again, uh, this is the this is the stator. See here's the disc, and it looks like it's enclosed in there, and then that would trap the brake dust into the motor, which, you know, with a regenerative hub motor, the brakes aren't gonna be used much. So maybe that was not gonna be an issue because it's so little brake dust, but thinking that it was a sealed unit was a was a problem. So I reached out to Alafe and basically they uh, responded to me and they said that if you look at this motor, it's not sealed. And so if we zoom in on this, you can tell, yes, it's not sealed. There's these vents in the uh, casing. And you can see the caliper here of the brake. And here's the brake rotor, the disc brake rotor. So it's not a sealed system. It must be that the, the bearings and such are sealed so that, you know, because you can run this underwater essentially, and it, and it runs fine. Uh, just like a regular uh, wheel, you could like submerge this in water and it still runs at least for a short time. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to leave it underwater for days, but for a few minutes, it seems to be not a problem based on their testing. But you can see that the caliper is here and the disc is here. So it will vent out the, uh, the uh, brake dust uh, without any problem. And then a few days ago, Olafe on their um, website posted this um, update. And it says, Alafe develops radial flux in real motors. Why not axial flux? I guess people have been asking them that because of all the you know, benefits of the axial flux. When it comes to designing in real motors, the key is in following a multi-physics design approach where one looks at all sorts of requirements. So basically you can't, they're just saying that you have to consider lots of different factors because it's not just the torque density or the uh, efficiency that they're looking into. They have to consider lots of other factors. And when we started, we considered all sorts of layouts, radial flux, axial flux, and TFM, and their variations regarding the motor, stator configuration, winding type, magnet distribution, number of phases, etc. We were not driven by the e-machine design, but the requirements of the in-wheel application. In the majority of loads, so see, they realized that as a hub motor, uh, there's going to be a lot of loads placed on it, uh, you know, like hitting potholes, uh, cornering, acceleration. So there's going to be a lot of uh, stresses on the the hub motor shape of the design space required robustness other components that need to be fitted into the wheel the ability to achieve higher pole pair counts machines and of course simplicity and cost yeah you got to make the thing uh cost effective because you know they want to turn it into a commercial venture this is not a this is not a research project only they want to turn it into a commercial venture the the radio flux motor clearly came out on top and in subsequent development we also refined other details with regards to the component layout to guarantee maximum performance with minimum changes to the mature and critical components such as brakes rims and suspension now that does not mean axial influx motor is not possible, but rather we did not find it practical from the requirement point of view. The systems that we can offer today prove that that was once a concept is now realized in real product, and that successfully addresses all requirements of annual application. So I think what it was is with an axial flux motor, um, th there was too much torque um, in the uh, sagittal plane, 
and that would uh, like when in hard cornering and stuff that would cause the air gap between the stator and the rotor to uh, get wider or too narrow and rub and that would destroy the motor I think, I'm guessing that's one of the big problems because uh, you need that with the radio flux motors but it's not quite as sensitive to the air gap and so they realized with that and the necessity to um, find space for brakes and calipers and stuff and the rim it, for them the they went with the tried and true radio flux motors and they did not go with the axial flux motors although you know maybe there's another company down the line or maybe even alafe will switch to axial flux motors if they can figure out the um, engineering issues with that motor so when i read this the other thing i was concerned uh, kind of confused about was what the heck is a tfm motor i have no idea what it is and what it is is it's called a transverse flux motor um and basically what it is i after researching it for a while i couldn't figure out what the heck a, a transverse flux motor was exactly and the best description i found was in this unlisted youtube video by uh this kid who is a um was this was a senior project and he did a great job explaining it i'll link this um below and you can watch like the first eh, four or five minutes of it where he describes how it works but basically it, it's a basically it is a axial and a radial flux motor combined it has both fluxes so it has even higher torque density and uh, it generates even less heat so lots of um uh, lots of advantages to it but i think the main disadvantage of it is it's very complex um so there is a uh, a company called Linear Labs, and they make a transverse flux motor. And if you look at it, they, they have this, it's composed of four rotors, two axial and two radial combined. And it's a hub motor, and but they make these very small hub motors for like scooters and stuff. So I, I don't think that they have the durability requirements of automotive hub motors, but it's a very interesting design. It's It has lots of advantages, but I think Alafe looked at this and realized that the complexity would reduce reliability and make it also very uh, expensive to manufacture and decided against going with this and um, decided to design a motor that's more robust and um, easier to manufacture and cost effective manufacture so they can bring it to market. So, you know, when you want to bring something to market, you've got to make a few compromises. You can't go for the uh, the absolute most uh, efficient or most powerful thing because it, it maybe it's it's 10 percent more efficient or 10 percent more torque but it's like 300 percent more cost and difficulty in manufacturing that's just probably not worth the trade-off and so they went with an axial flux so now we have some very good answers we know that um the uh the wheels are vented and uh, the brake dust will not accumulate in there and we know that Elafe did a did a thorough analysis and they looked at radial flux, they looked at axial flux, they looked at transverse flux, they looked at all the different design requirements and manufacturing requirements and and um, basically financial sustainability requirements. And for them, the radial flux uh, won out and they only make radial flux motors at this point. And so the motor in the Aptera is a radial flux motor. All right, so I hope that clears things up because there was some confusion in the, in the first video, and um, now we know. All right, thanks for watching.